Neil, well thanks for, for joining me. Uh, firstly, how would you describe your relationship to the late King George Tupo V and, and, and how did that begin? Well, I guess it, it began, I first met him around 1965, but have known him very closely since 1990. H HM was uh, one of my closest personal friends and I guess sort of treated me as like a confidant, somebody that he could discuss matters of great importance with knowing that I would treat them as as highly confidential. His his death has come very unexpectedly and, and a very great shock to to me and indeed to hundreds of, of, of his friends that I've been in touch with. And, and you've spent a lot of time with him and, and, and you've got obviously a lot of praise for the man. What are the, the main qualities that you would you would describe him with? He was the epitome of a gentleman, Alex. He how would I describe him? I mean he he was just the most fantastic man that that I've had the pleasure of knowing. He has impeccable dignity. He was a shining, shining example of a gentleman. He was considerate, he was honest, he was diligent, he was caring, he was polite, uh, he made people feel at ease. But above all, he was just a thoroughly nice person to be in company with. Some in the media have spoken about someone who's been eccentric and having lavish attire you obviously have known him at such close close quarters and, and you disagree with that, don't you? Well, I, I, I totally disagree with, with some of the people that say that he, he's eccentric. I mean, for instance, I've read where he is quoted as, as sailing model boats in his swimming pool. Mm. Well, he's never done that. I, I've read where he liked to play with toy soldiers. Well, he's never played with them, but he had, he was a great collector of toy soldiers. So I, you know, I disagree with, with that strongly. You also say that he had a good knowledge or a great knowledge of history and that broadened his outlook in life. Do you think that helped with him being able to step back from the monarchy's hold on, on parliamentary power in, in Tonga and, and reform the political system there? Possibly. He had a fantastic knowledge of history. And we've spent hours together in the kitchen of his villa, just him doing the talking and, and me doing the listening. And I think, yes, it may have helped his political reform process, but he was very, very committed to that from before he became king. And yourself, you're the honorary correspondent with, with the British High Commission in Fiji and with Tonga. What, what sort of tasks did that involve? It, it was, was kind of like a, a go-between, kind of like a... Um, asking things before official requests were made, just sort of feeling the, the, the play, so to speak. Um, as a, for instance, there is a Tongan contingent assisting the British Army in their duties in Afghanistan. And in discussions with the High Commissioner in Fiji for the UK, we, or he felt there may be some benefit if there was a Tongan contingent. But we both knew that that if, if HM didn't support the idea, then there was no point in, in going through the official channels to put that in place. And, and that was mm -hmm. just a, an example, you know, where I was able to, on, on a personal level, just ask HM what he thought of that idea and was it something that he would support. And I'm pleased to say he has. And, I, and I'm pleased to say that the Tongan contingent is highly regarded by the British Army for their role in Afghanistan. His father passed away. You were the first one he called. Any other tasks in particular regarding that that he gave you? When the late King Tafa Hau Tupo the Fourth passed away, HM rang me. I recall between between twelve thirty and, and one a.m. to advise me that his father had passed away, and he asked me to well, not asked. It was an instruction. When I look back on it, his instruction was: you are to get up, you are to get dressed appropriately which to us that know means dressed in black, and you are to drive and inform the Fijian nobility. And lo and behold, if I hear that you've attended to this instruction by a cell phone. <laughs> you know, so that was the, the serious side, the extreme serious formal side of him coming out, but combined with a more humorous side. Which ended up in, a, a, I suppose, a long night of driving around Ziva for you. Well, fortunately... Um, it wasn't because what he didn't say in his instructions was that I wasn't allowed to delegate. So as <laughs> I had advised what is our current president, who, by the way, is very, very close blood relative, um, as soon as I had informed him, um, he was able to continue the task. Um, but I, I never, never, ever divulged that to HM. One of the things that you, you uh, did divulge to him is, is that you were interested 
in uh, coming up to his coronation uh, of forming a, a charity trust to which his, his cash donations could, could be put towards for the, for the people of Tonga. Could you elaborate a bit on that? Yes, um, apart from the government side of, of planning the coronation under Prime Minister Sibeli, um, and, and they had a huge task, as you can imagine, there was um, an inner circle which, which HM formed, an inner committee that, that met formally and relatively frequently. And around about May 2008, I suggested to him that he might, and then these are how these things are done, Alex, and I said, said to him that he might like to consider putting any cash gifts that he got as part of the coronation into a trust that we could form and the purpose of that trust would be for the betterment of health and education and I'm pleased to say that he supported the idea very quickly and indeed did replace his cash gifts into that and I'm also pleased to report that that, that trust is functioning and I was due to meet HM in Sydney 2nd of April and in that meeting I was to request his permission for a first project for the trust which is to undertake a national census with respect to diabetes in the kingdom so that that in itself is is a task for me to approach uh, king to po the sixth and and i will do that up to the ending of the f official period of mourning right and and then you you have a, a good rapport with with uh, with the successor king to po the sixth yes um he, he has all the traits that his elder brother did um you know thorough fine gentleman just, just fantastic company to be with. And you think he'll he'll be um, intent on continuing the the democratic reforms that his older brother put in place? Oh, I, I think so, Alex. I think um, mm. uh, that, that there won't be any back changes to that. Um, uh, you know, I, I just think the process has has started and and it will continue. And um, you know, I think His Majesty will support that. Well, I mean, just to finish off, you're reflecting on a, a very, very long friendship with a very important man. And I suppose people would love to hear about instances where the public eye doesn't doesn't reach. You went on a, a long trip with His Majesty to Mongolia. Could you tell us a couple of anecdotes about that particular occasion? Oh, yes, we had a fantastic trip. Um, we started off in Ulaanbaatar, where we, we were there for the Nadam Festival, which was quite fascinating to watch. And after two or three days, we went on a tented tour of almost three weeks to Inner Mongolia. And I recall that evening when we had retired, I got into my tent. It, it was summer, but the temperature had dropped from about 45 degrees C at 5 p.m. to about 5 degrees C at 10 p.m. And so, uh, in, in fact, I was a bit unprepared for that. So I was wanting to get into the sleeping bag quite quickly. And HM had arranged for a fine gentleman called Harry Walkins from Auckland that fill my sleeping bag with camel dung. <laughs> that was, and the king took great delight in uh, in your reaction to that. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely! And as soon as my flashlight went on, that was his signal to know that uh, that I had found what was in in the bag, but of course didn't know it by then. But uh, it, it, it was like that. I, I've been I've had the pleasure of being overseas with him on several trips, and uh, they've always been always been absolutely fascinating. Well, look, thanks so much for your time. I suppose any any further words about his uh, his lasting legacy? It's uh, just tragic that he's passed on at such a young age. He had the, the sort of common touch. He made people feel very much at ease. And he, above all, Alex, it was his kindness. I mean, just his greatness, I guess, he'll be remembered by.